Welcome healthcare entrepreneurs to another amazing webinar and video. I have just recorded an amazing video with Rob Vining, who is a telehealth expert. So if you're a physical therapist, occupational therapist, speech therapist, looking to get into telehealth, this is the video for you. I deep dive everything with Rob and leave nothing uncovered. We go over what equipment you need, how to get started, how to figure out how to price your programs and your telehealth sessions, how to find patients. We also go into a lot of rules and regulations and legislation to make sure that when you start your healthcare practice via web chat like this, that you are safe, secure, and that liability is minimized. We also go into several examples of people that have been using his 10K challenge and how they have actually gone from zero patients to 100 visits in just three months. So he's gonna walk you through all that in this video. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. Please, if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe and like this video and comment as well because I'm trying to give you lots of amazing content from entrepreneurs doing telehealth, doing health coaching, doing app creation, so many things. And so subscribe to stay in touch. Also, if you have any questions, let us know below and Rob and myself will try to answer them. Look out for the link as well down below. That is for Rob's 10K challenge so that you can get started and potentially win $10,000. So let's dive into the video. therapy in my title bar, which Google picked up two or three months later, I was first page. And then I had a bunch of people on um, boats, yachts and offshore contacting me and getting a hold of me and saying, could, could you treat me for this? I don't want to go inland where we're out for a while, but you know, my shoulder hurts, my back hurts. And it was relatively simple to get paid through PayPal. Um, see him on uh, MSN messenger, which is an old school version of live um, interaction. We had horrible connections, but it was still able to be done and these people got better and they were completely happy. I mean, they paid two or three, probably five visits max in and they were good to go. They're like, this was great. This is exactly what I was looking for. Um, so that was back in 2005, uh, till about mid 2006 when Google changed our algorithm. And then, um, our ranking went from like number one to three for online physical therapy, went to page 12. And then at that point I was like, Oh boy, here we go. So I had to kind of start from, uh, basically just go back into the clinic and focus on nothing but clinic work um, until about five, six years ago, started working again in the online space. I'd always done some visits every now and then that were, you know, somebody was two hours away and they'd come into the clinic I was working at and I was like, this is not going to work. And they're like, yeah, it's killing me. I can barely get here twice a week, you know? And so we do visits that way. I always kind of kept with my roots on those outlier patients. And then um, five or six years ago, started making software, created the platform PT Live, um, which is a text telehealth and scheduling platform, and then started really pushing telehealth into the PT space probably about three years ago. Um, it helped when Dave Kittle and I were uh, doing the PT Tech Talk podcast, created the Telehealth 20 podcast, and then this Telehealth 10K challenge along with our uh, Telehealth Physical Therapy Providers Group, which is almost at 4,200 members now. It's nice. all PTs and a handful of PTAs. Everybody's going to be at 5,000 members telehealth. after this. I can guarantee it. <laughs> it's going nuts. Yeah, it's getting crazy. But it's been fun to see the growth of this and the interest um, because we've got people like Jared Carter. I was on his podcast and he was like, look, I'm going to be stingy. You teach me everything I need to know. I'm a manual therapist. How can I use telehealth? Yeah. And, you know, if you go back and listen to that podcast, he was like, oh, OK, there's all these different avenues that work in marketing to get people in the door. And so it's been fun to to do telehealth and all these different avenues and reach all these different professionals in the in the PT space. And now with the 10K was successful, we gave away actually eleven thousand dollars because we surprised our second place winner and was like, look, we're not just gonna pat you on the back and say good job. We're gonna give you a thousand bucks for second place. Um, and Ryan Shelton, he's awesome. He was like, Oh, okay, I'm not gonna say no to that. Um, but we created the telehealth library which is about 300, I think 320 something videos of actual patient visits separated by diagnoses. So people could go into telehealthpt.com, 
see specific diagnoses that they're scratching their head going, how would you see a back pain patient yeah. through telehealth? And you can see, you know, dozens of examples of that. And I think that's the big thing that people are looking for is give me an inkling or an idea of how this can work. So then I can implement this and start a side gig or a side hustle or put that into my practice as a, as a uh, second revenue stream. And so we're starting to see that flywheel go. Um, did the Institute of Clinical Excellence course. We've got two weeks left on that. And that's been pretty eye opening too, to see people, you know, Jeff Moore's taking the class right along everybody else. So Jeff and Onward Physical Therapy, they're implementing and, and putting in a telehealth portion. And so to see all these things happening at once, you know, after 15 years of doing this, you're finally like, it's happening. Yeah. Instead of, you know, having to fight people off going, what is telehealth? You know, how is that even applicable to our space? Now people get it. So now yeah. we're going to expand it to PTs and OTs for this next round, and it should be pretty fun. That's awesome. I think that, you know, I, I think with the with the rising unfortunate trends of, of decreasing reimbursement rates and, you know, people losing their jobs, I think that more and yeah. more you're going to find telehealth, like listening to you talk about these clinics, you know, this is an avenue where if you're seeing reducing reimbursement, reducing revenues, this is yeah. a way where you can keep patients you can expand your patients. And just like what you said, I mean, a lot of people don't have time to commute that far away, especially yeah. it can sometimes be even painful to commute. And so if you can then provide telehealth, you're going to get so many more patients that way. So I really think, I think, you know, you're, you're doing something great with telling clinics that are already created to add that into their practice. Cause I think we mm -hmm. often think of it like, Oh, it's a side hustle, but no, I actually think it's great for, current clinics that have mm -hmm. patients already to to expand that um mm -hmm. and i think that you, you've really done great with the videos because that's where i would be fearful like i actually tried to do uh, telehealth for a while i worked for a telemovement which is now mm -hmm. called a different company um yeah. but i was actually intimidated this was when i was sort of a newish grad and i was intimidated like what you said because right. i didn't understand how to do an evaluation over the computer, how to not touch right. someone. And so I think that you building that library is so necessary for people to break through from that fear. Cause I mean, we are liable. So it is, yeah. it is, it is something really important to, to know and understand. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's one of those things where people, once they get it and they click patients already get it. That's the funny part is the more that people are involved in like taking the leap, the yeah. more feedback I hear from professionals that go, these patients aren't giving me kickback. Like they're searching for this. And I'm like, yeah, I know. That's why we need to be in this space. Like yesterday, the rehab space is so green. Like I have people from Google, Facebook, all these ex developers that have left those big companies that are branching out and they all see the rehab space as a huge, huge yeah. open ocean of possibilities. And so I've got, you know, two or three guys right now that are trying to pick my brain constantly. And I'm like, look, I've done this so many times. I have a conversation with a developer that I just edited out that I seriously created and just to send to developers and go, here's what you're going to ask me. Here's all the answers because they all ask the same questions. And it's funny to see not only outside developers that have nothing to do with physical therapy, occupational therapy, or anything in the rehab space, they're trying to get into it. And I'm trying to push our professions into doing like, little side solo projects so that everybody can have that in their pocket to where when the, when reimbursement comes along, that's going to do a lot of the marketing for us yeah. to where we're not even going to have to really pitch it that hard. If people have a sore back, okay, well, does that therapist do it? Oh, okay. I can just talk to them or, you know, my husband had a stroke and I, I need to figure out some sort of functional movements around the house or transfer training, or, you know, is there an OT I can reach out to and do some telehealth? that way. Okay. That's way more convenient than going to a clinic three times a week. So definitely, definitely. awesome. Well, enough of this fluff. I know you guys yeah. want to hear the meat. <laughs> okay. Now also, you know, we've got a couple people on the webinar. We've got a couple people listening. So, you know, we're doing this for you. So please comment, post, let us know what you want. And if you're on Facebook, you can give us a little bit of love too. I appreciate that. I've had sort of a rough couple of weeks, so maybe a couple of parts, <laughs> please. Um, okay, Rob, uh, what, where do you think we should start? Maybe what do you need to even start this? And then we'll dive yeah. into maybe like using Irene, who is the 10K challenge winner, sort of mm -hmm. talking about her journey. Um, and right. maybe that will help people understand how to start. Yeah. 
Yeah, that would, that would be great. Um, so we did this even last night, we did an hour and 38 minutes. Um, and it's, if you go to youtube.com slash telehealth 20, that video is already up. I put that up last night after we finished and it was a great conversation, really picking apart all the things that she did to be successful because she was the absolute perfect scenario of what I wanted was somebody that came into the contest, really pushed themselves, saw those hundred visits, won the 10,000 bucks, and then transitioned right into a paid practice. So they took that and they added it into therapy. It's therapy-solutions.us. I think that's yeah, their website. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. And now they're having paid telehealth customers. And some of that carried over from the competition because those patients were like, yeah, why would I not pay for this? This is the best thing ever. And Irene gave a great example of a lady who, you know, she, she couldn't even get up in the morning without having to use her walker to really get up and get upright. And Irene treats a lot of chronic pain patients. And I think it was nine or 10 visits that she went through with this patient never saw her in person. And the patient got to the point where she's able to pop up and doesn't need her walker and is doing tons better. And so it's, you know, even those outlier scenarios where people would normally think, oh, you know, this wouldn't be a fit. Okay, great. But sometimes it is. And you don't know until you try. And then we always push that, that refund and refer possibility to always have in the back of your mind, look, if you see a patient that you're questioning and you see the intake form that you get electronically when the patient submits and schedules an appointment, you read down that intake and you're like, ooh, this is kind of iffy. Reach out to them via email, clarify a few questions. And then if they're not a fit, don't even worry about having that time slot taken. You just dish them to somebody else that's a good um, uh, connection that is a, has a brick and mortar clinic or has the capability to go see them in person. It's no big deal. Now it's a marketing moment. You can talk to that other professional and they're going to pick your brain and be like, what do you do? And now they have it in mind of anybody that fits your criteria to send them your way. Like that was something that Irene also was like, look, this is just easy. This was how this went when I had to refer them to somebody else or to get my hundred patients. I just talked to other PTs locally and throughout my state. And then they sent me patients because they had ones that were good fits. Um, and so the basics that you literally need is something with a front facing webcam, uh, a pair of headphones like this is seriously 20 bucks off Amazon, right? Piece of cake. It's got a really decent microphone. You don't need anything super high tech. And then all you need is some sort of scheduling component. Um, and there's free versions of schedulers that will give you like a month free. And it's really easy to use. And then seven, eight bucks a month after that. So in the competition, Irene basically had a laptop that she already owned. Um, she, I think she purchased a scheduling system, which was I think six or eight bucks a month. And then that's it. That was, she had a high speed internet connection. And she prepared and got those patients to schedule, saw the patients, figured out she only, I think the total number of patients that she saw was under 30. And then those of those under 30 patients, 30 numbers, not 30 in age, um, those 30 patients she saw them like two or three times a piece on average. And so she just repeated those, did kind of decent plan of cares for everybody throughout the time that she got from no visits to 100 visits. And then after that hundred visits spilled over right into paid patients. So it doesn't have to be difficult. Like you don't even have to have a website for this for the next 10 K challenge. It's all about getting people going and reaching out, cramming yourself with a challenge. That's the big piece. It's a challenge with a big $10,000 bag of money hanging at the end for that carrot. That'll keep you going. And then the whole goal is to do enough visits to get comfortable to then implement as a side gig or a new avenue for patients to come in through your brick and mortar clinic or your mobile therapy practice. And it is something that has really caught hold. And it's surprising that, that I'm, I'm always like, I have an idea and then it works. And I'm like, Ooh, that was kind of lucky. Right. And I'm kind of on this streak of luck. And so what I'm hoping is that it just continues to grow. And by growing, it's going to make more therapists and rehab specialists comfortable in this space. And then it, grows even further and grows even further. And now we have our foot in that telehealth space to where telemedicine doctors who are already having problems with people with back pain, neck pain, shoulder pain, and they don't know what to do with them because they can't give them meds. Like that's the last thing they're going to do is give out opiates for somebody with low back pain. And so these telemedicine doctors are handcuffed right now and they're looking for outlets. And I keep yelling at people over and over. I'm like, look, get in there. There's so many telemedicine docs that want somebody to refer to. 
and they don't want to refer them to a brick and mortar clinic because the patients are like, dude, I, I'm in telemedicine and a visit with you because it's convenient. I don't want to now make it inconvenient for the thing that you're saying is going to help me the most. Let me at least have an avenue that's on the same level to do telehealth. And so a lot of these doctors are looking for something like that. And that's another reason why I'm pushing this so hard in the rehab space is that we have to be prepared because the referrals are there. You just have to be well-versed, comfortable, and have a system set up, which you can do over a weekend. Yeah, I really like how how you you explain sort of how Irene got the patients. Because I think for me, I sort of feel like I need a bunch of patients. But then when you break it down, really, you don't need a lot of patients, especially if this is just your side hustle working the full time. You know, right. it, because you're going to see people a couple times a week or once a week, but every single week, mm -hmm. you know, you really only need five to seven people and then you just continue to see them and, yep. you know, just start with the first one or two people. Make sure you really are giving them amazing treatments. Make sure yep. that you're really comfortable. Make sure your system is in order and it's it's automatic and it's simple and easy and then go from there. And then yep. one thing you brought up, uh, Rob, was was the websites. You know, guys, there are actually so many free things you can use. One, make a Facebook page. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Or you could. It has a scheduling design. app in it. Yes, it the does. Facebook page has a scheduling app. It's super cake. It's easy, <laughs> easy, easy stuff, and it's free, right? You could do that exactly. Um, a lot of Instagram bios actually. I'm I'm seeing a lot of people creating that. So if you guys don't know what an Instagram bio link is, you can go to Linktree. I think it's Linktree.com. For example, so. there's also like Everlinks, Shorby. There's a bunch of these, and for free. And you don't need, it's not, it's a website basically, but you don't need any website filters. You don't need any templates. It's a very, very basic, think of it like a very, very basic website where you're very limited in what you yep. can do, but you can have a series yep. of links, uh, sometimes videos, sometimes images, and that could be your website too. So if you wanted to, you know, make something where people could go when you talk to them about what you do, these are a couple of free examples. Um, also, you can do like WordPress for free, or if you go to any, almost any um, word uh, uh, page builder, so like Weblium, yeah. uh, Weebly, uh, Wix, all of them, you can actually make like a free website. It's yeah. only when you start to have more customization, do you have to pay. And yeah. so, yeah. you know, you're not going to rank as high in Google with those free right. things, but for now, you don't want that. You don't necessarily need that, you know, test, you know, it's minimal viable product. Um, right. Yeah, yeah. And so can, can you talk, so Irene, you said mostly got her patients from just talking to other clinics, talking to other physical yeah, therapists. It, it was okay. boots on the ground. That's her whole thing is she was like, look, I didn't really use that many digital strategies. I just talked to other clinicians and told them that I was in this competition, explained the competition a little bit, that all the visits were free. That's the easiest barrier to entry is like, you're telling other therapists and patients, Hey, it's free. What do you got to lose? You know, I'll set it up for you and then let's attack your issue. And so it was fairly simple to get that ball rolling. It just takes a little bit of work to actually start talking to people. I know people are uncomfortable with that, but when you talk to other peers and you're talking to other professionals, they're going to have two or three people that they're like, yeah, you know, we had to quit seeing this patient because she lived too far away. So it was one of those scenarios that uh, she was just successful in it. And when she was successful, it was easy to kind of see, okay, I've got, you know, five visits set up my first day and she, she knocked it out. And then the next day was so much easier because she was like, I've already got five. And then she got to double digits, you know, by the end of the week, she was already in double digits easy. She was like, I can do this. This is easy. And then it just kind of snowballs because your confidence bumps up. You start learning the lingo of how to treat somebody when you can't touch them, yeah. but it's fairly simple. Your brain just has to kind of turn a corner a little bit. And once you do that, patients love it. I mean, you you will not really find a patient inside of that that telehealth library where you watch the video. You don't see the patients go, I can't believe how successful this was. Like, this is, this is perfect. This is everything I figured it would be, but I wasn't sure how we were going to do it. And it is one of those moments where the more people that see those examples, the more our professions are going to know that they can do it successfully and that it's going to have a good outcome. Definitely. What were some other strategies yeah. people had? So you, um, you know, for finding patients, you talked about mm -hmm. that Irene just went to her coworkers and went to some other clinics. Were there any other unique strategies you saw? 
Not a ton. I think a lot of people kind of just use social media to put out a post and say, here's what I'm doing. Um, if you, you or somebody you know that's inside the state that I'm actively licensed in needs help, I'm doing this competition. Here you go. Um, we made, I think, 10 or 12 little promo images that others could use and just plug in their domain name. So we tried to make it as easy as possible. We even gave people a script to pitch to newspapers and uh, like news TV outlets. Um, Ryan got on a news program. There's a couple of people that got newspaper articles written up about them. Nice. And it was fairly simple. Yeah, because the news, uh, surprisingly enough, they're looking for good <laughs> pieces of happy information that they can pitch out to the public that is beneficial. Because everyone, it's such a counterintuitive thing to turn the news on and see, hey, we're helping the community. Here's how. Watch this. You know, they're looking for information like that. So when they can grasp that sort of a, a good meaty news piece, they're looking for it. They're like, hey, free stuff and it helps the community. Yeah, of course we're going to do something like this. So I, I expect to see that become a bigger and bigger piece of the equation coming up. That's awesome. Yeah. And that's great to know that, you know, you you know, good media. That's so true. Like maybe just mm -hmm. going out to these HARO is another one help. It stands yep. for help a reporter out. Um, you know, you can go there. Also, if you're looking to try to get your clinic, your business out, you can, you can check out that too. So that's great. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we talked about the equipment, very basic. Um, what about the documentation? What did she use? Just pencil and paper or Google Docs? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Pencil and paper. Um, I I've always done my whole career. Anytime that I've seen a patient, um, I, for a tiny, tiny smidge, I did some typing on a Google Doc, but patients hate that. They literally were like, bah, because I was testing it. And I was like, all right, we're going to do it this way today. And at the end, I was like, all right, how'd you feel? And she was like, I don't know if you're on Facebook or you know, I don't know what you're doing. I, I like the pen and paper because my joke is like, they know you're not writing a letter to grandma telling, you know, here's the update. <laughs> they know you're writing based on what they're giving you for information. And it's very simple. They don't like to hear clicking and documentation, but at the same time, I just give people tips. If you're going to type while you're doing this, just mute it while the patient's talking so that they don't hear click, 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 click. You know, it's, it's yeah. just those little tiny bits of help and good practice that help patients feel more comfortable. And it just creates a better relationship and a better rapport when you're seeing a patient online. Um, I just, yeah, always pen and paper for me and just put it in a, a locked fireproof filing cabinet next to me. Easy. Awesome. And then if the doc wanted some sort of a uh, eval or a discharge written up, I'd do it for him. So okay. easy. Good, good. Um, and then let's talk a little bit about like liability, legality mm -hmm. things, because I know that anytime you're starting a new business or anytime you're treating patients, you always have that to think of. So what's some of yep. your recommendations and thoughts on that? Yeah, always have a consent form in place. Um, and that's another thing with the 10K. We we hand everybody everything on a plate. Like I wanted nobody to have any sort of excuse like, well, I would have done it. But so we create a very simple uh, consent form, a very simple video release and educational release form for the patients as well um, to sign, get that done. We even walk everybody through how to create a Google intake form that also has the consent form included in there. And so it once the patient fills out that intake form, um, you can make it HIPAA compliant with like seriously one click. It's super easy. And G Suite accounts are six bucks a month. Again, super, super cheap. This is nothing that is like going to break the bank at all. Uh, once they go through that, they sign it, go through. You now have the intake information. You have a digital signature for a timestamp digital signature for consent to treat. And you're off to the races. So it's fairly simple to set things up. And everything that I'm talking about, I've done a walkthrough video of everything, breaking it down like step by step to where people could watch a six, seven minute video and have their whole intake and consent to for, treat form done, like all finished. Awesome. And the liability, the um, most of the major insurance companies, if not all of them will cover telehealth because they see it as just the exact same as an in-person visit. The only thing different is you have to make sure that you have that consent form signed. That is the most important part that some people will forget about but it's always a good CYA move to have a consent signed. Um, and most liability insurances are simply, it's just a step in the same direction. Um, like okay, I awesome. said, North Carolina last year, yeah, North Carolina sent out a, a message to everybody that was a PT in their state and said, please quit asking us about telehealth. It's the same. Just follow your practice act, please. 
Uh, we're getting bombarded with this. So I think it's pretty much like that over the majority of states, except Delaware, which next week I'm presenting at the Delaware uh, PT Association to kind of convince them to roll back their, you can't see a telehealth patient for an eval or a discharge or a reassessment. I'm presenting to hopefully change their mind and get them to roll back to more, more logical ways of reaching patients, even if it's an eval, even if it's a reassess or a discharge. Um, so that people in Delaware don't have to miss out because they're in one of those caveat states. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about like uh, the rules and and uh, you know some state differences. So so if I'm say I'm 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 in New Jersey. So say mm -hmm. I want to practice telehealth and I have my New Jersey license. I can practice telehealth in New Jersey. But mm -hmm. say I, you know, say I don't have my license in Pennsylvania. I cannot do telehealth in Pennsylvania, correct? Only right. where yep. I'm licensed as a PT. So it's very yep. similar to our sort of standard PT license act, where you can yep. only practice in the licenses where you have have that actual license. Um, yeah. And so with the with the um, PT compact, is that sort of inclusive of telehealth as well? So if I have the compact it licenses, is. I can go ahead and do that. Okay. Yeah, it's it's all based on, and the the funny part is. It's all based on where the patient is physically located. So okay. you could, in some states, you could be anywhere. And as long as the patient is physically located inside a state you're actively licensed in, you can see them. And so the PT Compact will expand that because it allows for you to practice in different states. Now you have to follow their practice guidelines. So if they say you have to do it a certain way, you have to follow those rules and regs of that state. But then it still gives you access to that whole patient population to see them over telehealth. Um, so a lot of people right now are just pretty much keeping their, their options open. If they're in a compact state already, it lets them have the capability to get a PT uh, compact licensure in another state. And they just wait until a patient finds them that is in one of those states and says, okay, give me a day. I got to do this to get my active licensure here to see you. Um, I'll get my compact privilege the next day. You're usually good to go. And you can then see that patient there. So it's really nice and flexible and it's growing. I think we've got 18 states now. Um, hopefully more on the way uh, to hopefully get that blanket coverage. I, I can't wait until we have something like that. That would be great. Yes, I know. I wish I wish I, the compact would have been just like a one easy one all thing, but that's my soapbox. I know, okay, I know. I'm going to keep shooting at you. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. next <laughs> one is billing. So what did most people, did most people bill like just cash based? Did they do insurance? Um, what's your yeah, recommendations for the, on that? For the telehealth 10K, it all has to be free. So that's one stipulation is that all the visits have to be free so that there's no, there's no barrier to entry or difficulty. And we could make this as much as a public victory as possible. Like there's the PT day of service. This telehealth 10 K yeah. is like the PT three months of service because we want that, three Rob. months worth of you helping. Um, and so we wanted it to be free. And most patients nowadays are doing, I'd say 95% are all cash pay. Um, there's those okay. 5% caveats that fit into um, what's called a parity state. And so a parity state, for example, California just passed a rule that um, put them, I think it's the, they're now the 42nd state that has a parity law in place. And what a parity law is, is it makes private insurance companies, not Medicaid or Medicare, they're in a different scenario altogether, but private insurances have to pay on par for a telehealth visit, the same as they would pay for an in-clinic visit. So there's a bunch of hoops and hurdles that insurance will usually put up and you need to be aware of those before you just say, all right, I'm in a parity state and then start billing. And then you get a, a basically rejection back saying, no, all 42 visits that you just submitted are all denied. You didn't do this one thing. So if you're in a parity state and you're looking for insurance reimbursement, my tip is always to have a big old notebook ready to go. You call one of the most um, common insurance carriers, private insurance carriers that you see, and you ask them, Hey, what do I need to do to get reimbursed for telehealth? And the number one answer they're going to give you is we don't reimburse for telehealth. And you're going to have to say, nope, we're in a parity state. Get me connected with somebody in your group that knows this law because I know that you have to pay. So then you have to kind of go through a couple of layers. You write down all the little nooks and crannies and little hurdles they give you. And then you wait a couple of days, you call back again. You talk to somebody else in that same company, see if they give you a similar answer. If so, then you've got something to work with that you can submit one claim with a good fit of a client that has that insurance that then you can see them and then you could submit it and see if you get reimbursement. 
So I tell everybody to start that way. That's the smartest way to go about it versus just trying to say, I'm in a parity state. And then you submit and get, you know, a complete waste of time with a rejection of your charges. So. Wow. What yeah. I got out of that is do cash base. Do not yeah, do yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's for those five percenters that are like, hey, I want to do this. I want to do it through parody. I'm like, all right, get ready. It's, it's a little bit of a slog, but here we go. Now I know why so many people are like, eh, enough with this insurance bit. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, yeah. say, did anyone find, now for the 10 cut, obviously it was for free, but mm -hmm. in your experience for people doing telehealth, have, have people provided any pushback against charging cash? I don't think so. Um, pushback in the sense of patients or providers or both? Yeah, the patients, because I, I mean, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I think a lot of people, I would love to use my insurance if I could. And so I know a lot of people <laughs> right. are, are in that same boat. So, you know, how do yeah. you go about having that conversation? Yeah, and the easiest way to do it is usually the majority of the time people are gonna have a copay. And if you're charged for a, a, for a telehealth visit is gonna be similar to a copay. I mean, it's just kind of common sense. They're like, oh, well, I don't have to take two hours plus off of work three days a week. Uh, that makes me more money at work. And then I do it on my time and I'm already going to be paying a 50, $60 copay. So I might as well pay you 50 or 60 bucks for your cash price and then get the treatment I need without having to miss work or, you know, miss kid or family events or something like that. Um, like when I was uh, doing a DPT presentation for Western Carolina University, um, the, the professor, John, told me, look, in a, here in the, this state, Blue Cross Blue Shields charge like for a copay is 95 bucks. I was like, oh, he was like, yeah, that's common for physical therapy copays for Blue Cross is 95 bucks a pop. And I was like, wow. Like, and you can imagine that you're, you're looking like a gold plated, <laughs> you know, anything. The patient's like, oh, I was already going to pay this much. And you're either cheaper at this same rate and more convenient and you know wow. all these other and 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 that they're going to have their eyes opened on and they're acceptable to it like this is something that they are receptive to having wow. those types of visits there's always going to be people who are like no i gotta be the old way and that's fine yeah that's just not the fit and we would never want to you know force the old square peg into a round hole you want to make sure that the patient's a good fit first and then you can go forward yeah. and if they're not a good fit you get them where they need to be because that's the whole goal is get them better as fast as possible so interesting. So going to pricing. So maybe a good idea for because I know everyone's like, well, how do I know what to charge? So your recommendation mm -hmm. is almost take a look at your state's copays and then mm -hmm. almost charge from that. So I yeah. guess you go to Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, Blue Cross mm -hmm. Blue Shield of California, and then take a look at their copays. I like that yeah. idea because then you're really yeah. giving someone a tangible example of what they're actually going to pay. Yeah, totally. And then you, you just match that. I think that's a great idea for pricing. Yeah. Um, I was yeah, going to say something else that I always, yeah. I was going to say the other thing that some people will also pick on is, is, you know, some clinics have to see three to four patients an hour to make ends meet, like specifically sometimes hospital clinics are the worst at this. They've just got stacked and stacked calendars of PTs. You know, that's why half the burnout is happening because you're seeing yeah. two, three, four patients an hour and the end of the day, your notes are this high, right? And so if you're only able to see a patient one-on-one -on -one for 15 minutes because you got three other people at the same time, how much actual care is happening with that? You know, you can't even get good patient education sometimes if you only got 15 minutes. So I always pitch that as well. Whenever I was talking to patients that would have any sort of questions about the insurance part is I'd say, look, I'm going to be able to see you one-on-one. -on -one. I can't stick you on a total gym and hit a timer and walk away from this video. Like it's me and you this whole time. So you're going to have an hour of my undivided attention where I'm going to answer every question you have. I'm going to over-educate the crud out of you <laughs> so that you know what's going on with you better than I do. And then you're involved in your invested because I don't have the magic Jesus hands to touch you. I can't put a hot pack and a tens on you to make you feel better. This is something where you have to be invested in your rehab and patients that are all about this. They're just like, yep, this is me. This is what I want. And they, it is not hard to get these patient populations to do their home exercises. So you want to talk about a mindset shift. There's been some PTs that are like, they do what I say. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, because if they're paying cash and they're taking up your time, they they know that that next visit's around the corner and it's all on them. If you told them to do something that they didn't do it, they just wasted their time and your money or no, their money and their time 
and your time. So they know that they need to get it done. Um, so it, it really preps that patient to be invested in their recovery. Yeah, I think I think you're exactly right with that. Saying that it is private one on one session is huge because I know uh, I've had a couple people that, you know, I've just had patients, family members and things. And they talk about the fact that when they've gone to PT, it's yeah. not one on one, you know, and it's like what you're saying, stick on mm -hmm. a new step. There you go. And then one other yeah. thing, it looks horrible because we are so skilled and, yeah. and sorry if I'm only talking about PT, I mean speech, I mean OT, I mean all those other rehab yeah. professions. You all are feeling the same as me where, where, you know, we're overwhelmed, we're multitasking. And so, you know, we're not always able to do the one-on-one, -on -one, even though we want to, we have the heart, we have the right. skills, it's just time management. And so you're exactly right. If you're tired of right. that BS and you want to start doing, you know, more one-on-one -on -one care plus, you know, actually getting better patient results, then maybe this is, mm -hmm. this is a solution. Now, a couple of yeah, questions man. I've always had. The writing's about on the visit. wall. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I think, you know, a lot of clinics are going to have to start changing because people are not wanting to go to physical therapy mm -hmm. clinics anymore when they're dealing with that. They know they can go to other places. Right. So yeah. I think there's going to be some change. Um, yeah. My question about visits. Now, if you're billing cash, can you, are there any regulations you know um they still have to go to the doctor of course for after uh you know 10 visits and such can you talk a little bit about all those different things yeah. we have to know about okay yeah it's it's the exact same boiling it down really simply just follow your practice act if your practice act in the state that you're in and licensed in says you have to do this it's the same just just keep it honest keep it the exact same don't need to overcomplicate it um so many people are like does this mean i get carte blanche and can go across state lines and i'm like why? Like, why risk it? You already have this capability to do the things that you need to do without geographic limitations. Just do it the way that your practice act says, follow those guidelines. It's nothing new. I mean, if you, if you need to do a little documentation and shoot it off to the doc and get a fax back, I was doing that successfully in 2005. Like nobody batted an eye when I would fax something over and have direct PT online physical therapy and big, bold letters in my header and docs would just stamp, send it back, you know, and when I say stamp, I mean sign, but we all know it's stamped most of the time still when they're not supposed to. Um, but it was, it's just simple. It's okay. really not that much more complicated other than knowing your practice act and then following those guidelines. Awesome. Now, one thing I, I'm thinking about out loud here is that there's a lot of commonalities between telehealth and health coaching. You know, I mm -hmm. had Jessica Drummond on who's been amazing. And I feel like there's a lot of parallels and where I'm going with this is that, you know, it seems like there's more regulations and complications if you're trying to do telehealth or telept, yep. tele OT, versus if you're doing, say, wellness, yeah. you know, more of uh, that. What's, you know, what would be your take on that? Do you, do you see people sort of mixing and matching and doing like, you know, telehealth until they sort of, until the doctor is stopping approval and then they go to wellness visits if the patient really wants to continue. Yeah, it can, it can be a mix of that, but at the same time, I always want people to think of the, the absolute worst case scenario is that your practice is done in a way that somebody would question it and they wanna dig in and then they get into the nitty gritty and then they go, ooh, you did one visit that is questionable and then you get your license pulled. And I'm like, ah, don't even, don't even like risk it. So yeah. the best thing that I always say is if you're doing something that's that could be suggested or referred to you by a doctor and it's got a diagnosis, you know, connected with that, that's PT. If you're doing something that is outside of that, that you could literally just create some sort of a program or you've got somebody that um, is something that is way outside of the scope, like in Tennessee, for example, this is where it gets complicated. So Tennessee has something written into their practice act where it talks about like, wellness and health coaching, right? So it talks a little bit about that as part of their practice act. So then it is boiled into that to where you can't necessarily go outside of the state lines because your own practice act where you're licensed in says, hey, this is under your scope. So if you practice outside doing, oh, I'm doing health coaching and wellness coaching, well, then Tennessee could come back and go, ah, uh -uh, buddy, no, it's in your practice act. You got to stick within the bounds of the state. So it's, it's the old rehab golden handcuffs, right? Like yeah. we're a higher level professional that is extremely skilled and highly trained, but at the same time, we're treated almost like this lower level, we're trying to get away with something, right? Meanwhile, there's health coaches, personal 
personal trainers, not knocking them, but they have a lot more freedom than we do. So until those laws and regulations and the, the test cases get put out there to kind of stamp what we can and can't do, I always suggest, look, if, if you're able to exhaust your whole state and the whole population of your state, you're a busy person. Like, I don't know about anybody else, but if I've got 40 people on my schedule for a week, I'm pretty busy. And, and I think there's more than 40 people in every single state in the U.S. So you're going to be busy. Just make sure that you're not, you're not going around things and, and risking having your license yanked. Um, that's, that's my big suggestion on that. Okay. 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 That makes sense. Yeah. It's so tough, you know, to me, you know, I've not dived into either one of these and, and I really feel like I haven't one, cause I have no time. Um, right. but two is, is really, there are some serious things that we have to be, you know, like what you said, I take my license very seriously and I take patient mm -hmm. care very seriously. And so, but I also, you know, would love to have a successful side hustle, love to have something like this. And so I see where, you know, it's a challenge to understand, you know, do I go wellness or do I go the telehealth route? Right. Um, and so I guess maybe would some of the pros for the telehealth be, you know, you definitely know that it's covered by your practice act. You definitely know you're safe doing that. <laughs> um, and, yeah. you know, perhaps maybe you could charge more because it's more skilled. Um, yeah, yeah, it could be. And then the pros. And I, I never tell people not to do it. Like, that's the yeah. thing is that if everything in your state says it's okay to do and you've got all the legal language in place and you've talked to a healthcare attorney that says, no, we got just have to have these things signed and here's the things to do and here's the thing not to do. But when it gets to that point, a lot of people are like, I don't want to talk to an attorney. You know, yeah. it's super capable to, to split those lines and to know where to do it and where not. But it usually takes a little bit of extra legwork that most people don't want to do. So when they don't want to do it, I'm like, I'm not going to risk it and tell you, here's how you yeah. do it, because it may be way different in your state. Yeah. But if you talk to have a couple hours of an attorney time and it seems like a big daunting task, you do your homework and research and present it to the attorney. They're going to be like, yeah, do this, do this. Oh, don't do this at all. And here's why. And it's, it's not like you're having to reinvent the wheel. You just need your your guardrails, right? Yeah. Once you have those yeah. guardrails in place, you're good. You're good to go. But it differs by state. Um, so that is why I suggest that people really dig in, look into your practice act. Number one, dig in. Cause like I said, there's those outliers where like with Tennessee, it's got some language already in there. So that would handcuff them a little bit more than other States. So just take a peek into that. And if you need a couple hours in attorney time, do it. It's well worth it. If you're going to do something that will prevent you from having any sort of issues in the future with your license. Yeah, that makes, you know, I didn't even know who to go to. I didn't up until right. about a second ago, I didn't even know there was a healthcare attorney. So right, yeah. okay, that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. So when you're when you're doing this, I mean, it, telehealth seems like a very clear cut route, but then blending it between telehealth and wellness, I can see where that can be vague. So that makes sense that, you know, when you're diving in, just make sure all the, you know, all the X and Ys and the I's are dotted and, and crossed. And so talk to a healthcare yeah. attorney, especially if you're doing wanting to do this seriously. Because I agree with you, like you mm -hmm. want to get started out on the right foot and you want to come off very professional too. What we do is a very yeah. skilled service. Yeah. And so as therapists, PT, OT, speech, all those, you know, I think it's, it, that's, that's a really good idea. Um, yeah. Let me yeah. see. I'm, I'm running out of questions. Please, people help me. Oh, I'm trying to ask him <laughs> as many tough questions as I can think of. So Jean, yeah. Lori, you're on here still. Please ask away on um, Facebook. Please ask. And then we'll try to. Uh, anything I'm missing? Do you want to talk more about Irene's journey? Um, anything else? Go for it. Oh, I guess kind of related to that. So in the, the telehealth 10 K challenge, we allow 30 of the 70 or 30 of the hundred visits to be wellness visits. So this okay. is, I don't want to scare anybody off. Like, Oh, he said no wellness. No, no, no. It's, it's built in, but I want to make sure that everything's above board and like up and beyond. I would never want to put anybody at yeah. risk for getting in yeah. trouble based on what I do. But you know, in these types of conversations, I can't go, Hey, for Texas, it's this for Delaware, it's this, and then go over all 50 States. So I like to give that kind of broad general, but it's yeah. a beautiful blend if you do it right. Um, okay. And there was people that I know Irene saw a few people for, for health and wellness as well. But she also mentioned last night that when she was seeing people in the competition for health and wellness, it was a tough slog to get them in for like a one-off visit where she could have spent more time seeing maybe two or three or her of her regulars. 
that already knew how, how everything was going and how to set stuff up. Um, and so she was mentioning that she didn't do as many one-offs for wellness and, uh, uh, you know, she more or less just did regular plan of cares with normal physical therapy patients. Um, uh, that was, that was a big piece of it for her is she got some established patients. I think she said she, she tried to get, um, I think 50 plus patients set for visits and only a little handful under 30 actually attended, which still is better than 50%. That's a pretty good percentage. Yeah. If you're doing any sort of marketing and you get yeah. more than 50% of people into your funnel, it's great. Um, and then of that under 30, she took those, did repeated visits and then won the competition. That's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I like that she did the blend. So, mm -hmm. you know, thinking out loud about the whole wellness thing. So would a good example be, so I work at the VA, I work with veterans mm -hmm. and I've actually thought about this before. We don't have, I've asked my boss and my supervisors, we don't have a lot of telept in the VA yet. It's coming. Yeah. It's only in certain places. And right. so you know, perhaps say, say I joined this challenge, you know, I've already just dis say I've discharged that patient from my care and then mm -hmm. started them into telehealth or wellness with me. Could I then mm -hmm. have that be wellness? Because I've, I've already seen them for 90 days. I've pretty much already yep. sort of plateaued and now I'm just like checking in and just making sure that I'm making them accountable. Yeah. As long, long as it's not addressing some sort of a diagnosis that could be stuffed into an ICD 10 code, right? Yeah. I mean, that's kind of that, that passing the smell test is all right. Is there an ICD 10 for this thing that you're seeing them for? If it's kind of generic exercise, you know, endurance training, even that sometimes can be put into like a, a, a oh, now my brain's going to go blank. Like when you're done with care, it's maintenance. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even maintenance yeah. can be reimbursed through, through insurance at times. So it's one of those to where if you're seeing somebody and they're absolutely fine and you're just doing training, getting their getting their stamina back up, up and beyond. Like they want to go to the store and they want to be able to walk around Costco for an hour, right? That's something that insurance is not, they're not really going to look at that and go, eh, we don't really need to pay for this. That's kind of above and beyond. We need them to be able to get around their house safely, prevent yeah. some fall, go to their mailbox, get back inside if needed, up and down stairs if they need to. But going to Costco for an hour, that's kind of questionable, right? Yeah. But if you're trying, and to get them to that that point, I would see I'd be totally comfortable doing that um, because that is one of those up and beyond. But let's say they're doing something and then they they had some sort of issue and now they have numbness down their left leg out of nowhere. That's one of those where I'm like, OK, put on the PT hat because now this <laughs> has to transition back to seeing if they need some specialty, you know, imaging or whatever might need the doctor to actually say, OK, yeah, you got to get back on the PT side because this thing is is something that is an outlier. It's not just wellness getting back to doing an hour at Costco. It's actually some brand new thing that you need to take a peek at. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, good. I'm glad I asked that question because that makes me feel yeah. more confident now thinking about maybe in the future what to do. And hopefully that mm -hmm. makes everyone, you know, clarify as an example as to when you could do wellness and when you, you know, want to have it be more focused on therapy yeah. services. Um, yeah. Okay. Keep asking questions. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Anything else we haven't gone over, um, Rob, any sort of big, you know, ideas or big like learning experiences people had from the 10K challenge? Yeah, I, I would say a lot of times once people have overcome that fear, the easiest way to do it is just to have a system like, like I try and make everything as low cost or no cost as possible when I'm suggesting how people get started. And I always say, just grab the free version of Zoom get the encryption button clicked. It's seriously going into your account. I have it for free, like a video on how to encrypt Zoom. You get that free encrypted Zoom call and then practice with friends and family. Like, and they can have pretend diagnoses and then just get comfortable with teaching them how to set up the technology. Once you have, you know, hit this button, hit this button. And if all else fails, you've got their phone number, call them and walk them through it. It's super easy. And then once they hit the right button, they're like, oh, I see you. Here we go. Now we're onto it. And then the second visit is just as easy. Like they know and remember, hit the little camera button and the little microphone in the bottom left. And they're unmuted and they're, you know, professionals at it. Even 80 year olds can learn how to work a remote control and can get on Facebook. This is not something where people are like, oh, it's, you know, it's never going to age up. No, a big study from, I think it was the University of Michigan, I think overhead uh, 2,400 
participants in this 50 to 70 year old study that they did. And they found that I think 64% of that age range was like, yeah, telemedicine visit. That's fine. Sounds good. You know, it's not something that they're afraid of. They just need to know how to do it. Once they know how to do it, they're all about it. They're like, yeah, it's totally convenient. I don't need to get Barbara down the street to drive me to my visit. I don't yeah. want to inconvenience Barbara. I like playing, you know, poker night with Barbara. I don't want to depend on her for doing my stuff. So it's one of those things where it really can play a vital role at getting people comfortable and into your ecosystem of whatever your brick and mortar, your mobile practice, or just your digital practice. It can get them into that without having to depend on other outlying factors to, to travel like yeah. bus who knows oh, 100, how 100 it's almost impossible I mean, to get somebody on time it is. through well especially local if they're transportation elderly too. especially mm -hmm. if they're elderly like this is i work you know in a subacute facility and this is my constant struggle is i'm a, i'm having to like try to get the va to help you know do medical transportation because they're wheelchair bound mm -hmm. or they're really not steady enough to do community ambulation they could do in home but not community yep. you know outside where it's raining it's snowing and things like yep. that so I'm, I'm constantly struggling and so this broadening of, of of telehealth is is so necessary for all those patients that don't have any mm -hmm. family members don't drive can't drive oh, yeah you know, so many things. Well, yeah. um, I think we're down to one last question. Um, any, anything you yeah. want to add, Rob? <laughs> um, and then please, yeah, let's, let's go over how people can join the 10 K challenge and then, um, yeah, sure. uh, learn more. Yeah. Yeah. So this round is different than last round. Last round, okay. um, we pretty much just put it out there and we we're like, all right, let's see if people do this. And they did it. We got a library started. Great. Now there's a stake in the ground. That's why I didn't try to initially do this with, you know, PT and OT and speech therapy. So we're kind of doing it piecemeal. We know we did it successfully with PT. Now this round we're doing PT and OT. We're, we also have, I think 12 or 13 software sponsors that, and awesome. this is, I'm not talking like random people. I'm talking PhysiTrack, Blue Jay, um, virtual physical therapists, lots of names that you've heard of that have contributed their software and services for four months for free while people are in this competition so that you can use their software and figure out if that's the best fit for you. Because they know if you use their software in the environment they've created the software for, you're going to become a lifelong customer. So everybody gets like thousands of dollars of free software use through the challenge. They also get all the videos that I've done, which if you just went to telehealthpt.com and bought stuff, don't do that, please. That's like 2,500 bucks of stuff. This is 299 bucks to get into the competition, to have all that information. And on top of that, Will Boyd just threw in his podcast um, content that teaches people how to start a podcast. Will and Alex threw in Social Secrets, which is a whole nother way where you can learn how to blow up your business and make it successful. Tom Delonzo Baker threw in free TMR training. Like there's people that are coming out of the woodwork to throw information into this package so that us as a rehab profession won't get to a point where let's say the home health cut happens and we've got five, 6,000 PTs, OTs that are completely out of work now. Your mortgage and your car note does not take a pause whenever you get cut from your job, right? Yeah. So that's other things that we're trying to do is create a buffer that is very fast to implement, very easy and low overhead to where you're not gonna pay more than you know 40 bucks a month and you have your own digital practice going. You could do digital, practice with a mobile component and see patients in their house for cash pay and you already have a car you need gas money and you need the portions of software that make this easy and that's you know 40 bucks a month for the software portion if you're really driving around a lot maybe 50 bucks for gas a week and if you're all cash pay and you're doing visits five six visits and you're charging 100 bucks a pop that's way more and way more efficient than trying to open your own brick and mortar clinic that's, that's, yeah, that's a tough slog. Um, so that is what we're doing now is we're getting more and more people to reach out to kind of bulletproof our professions so that if, or, or I hate to say it, but when these cuts happen of our professionals, then they'll have an avenue to go to so that they don't just have to go to the next hospital system that says, oh yeah, well, we had to cut our pay by 40%. So your usual salary that you thought you were going to get at the other place well, we'll pay you, but we're going to pay you only 60% of what you were getting paid. And that is happening right now. And people don't yeah. understand that big corporations, they run a business 
that has to respond to what the market does. If the market cuts reimbursement by 8%, they can't just keep paying people higher and higher amounts because they're based in insurance. You're either going to see more patients or you're going to have your salary cut or you're going to get, you know, cut period. So I want to create something that's going to future proof us and bulletproof us in a way that is totally doable. It has a big carrot hanging at the end to where if you do this, you get rewarded. And then at the same time, time we're creating this huge library to where people who might feel uncomfortable even starting can look at it see other examples of other pts and ot's doing it and go i can do this and then they get started doing it you know and it's a huge win-win and the patient population they love this this is not twisting arms to get visits so yeah. start with this get successful get efficient at it and then you will bulletproof yourself for anything in the future that comes for if you're working for a big corporation and they have some cuts they need to make, you're not, you know, hanging out in the breeze with all your bills needed to be paid. And then they're like, oh, sorry, we got to cut you. We got to keep our lights on. And even that, I mean, you take this and say you're a new grad or a recent grad or, or anyone right now, mm -hmm. you get hired somewhere, you can say, hey, let's expand to telehealth. I've been learning yes. all about this. I can do this. And you know what? You could run the telehealth division of whatever clinic you get yep. hired at. And it, that's, that's, what, that's what that's Irene what is right doing right now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Irene did it. And she went right into it. And their clinic was, you know, arms wide open. They're like, yes, please, let's do this. So they nominated Irene to be the point person for this. She participated. She won the competition and they tucked it right into their practice. Yeah. So this is not a, ooh, I wonder if. Awesome. It's never a question of if with technology. It's always a question of when. Yeah. So it, these are not going away. Like <laughs> cell phones aren't going anywhere. Tech isn't going anywhere. It's awesome. becoming more useful and we need, need to get ourselves into the game in order to actually, you know, have our seat at the table, have our say. So. Good. Well, well, I feel a lot more confident and comfortable if I wanted to do this route. I know my equipment. I know what to charge. I know the laws and the legality and how to be all like secure with that. And Rob, if if anyone, you know, I'm sort of really getting into making websites. And so mm -hmm. uh, I can make like a cool website template. And if anyone's interested on this call or in your group in me wanting to make a website for them, um, I'm sort of, I nerd out and I do that like in my spare time. So I would be yeah. happy to make someone a simple website, <laughs> not, yeah. Any, yeah. not any crazy thing. So as part of the 10K right. challenge, if you want to um, just, you know, if you're on Facebook, you can comment and then I'll private message you. Um, or you can email me at alternativehealthcarecareers.com. I'm sorry, at gmail.com. And I'd be happy to start making you guys a website so that if you do want to do this really seriously, you can start to get traffic to that site mm -hmm. while you're doing Rob's 10K challenge. Um, yeah. Lastly, Rob, what's the link again? So, so I can make sure everyone knows the link yeah. to go to for the 10K. Yeah. So if you go to telehealthpt.com, the link is right on the top there. You're going to see the library, which we made front and center at the very top. That's free. Um, no, no restrictions on that at all. You just have to basically put in an email so that we know you're not going to, you know, DOS attack the server or anything like that, because there's a lot of video files on there. So we gate it just by an email, but it's free. And then the telehealth 10 K is the next thing down. So the uh, domain name is like telehealthpt.com slash telehealth 10 K two, because it's the okay. second round that we're doing. Um, and so it, this next round is going to be fun. We're going to have a bunch of challenge goals. It's not just going to be, you know, the, the checks that I always have here to make it real. These were given out, right? These were actually given to people and it was a huge success. And we only want to build on this and make it more successful. This next round with OTs, I can't wait. We already have a group of OTs of about 20 to 25 OTs that are going to take advantage of this. Um, they're just waiting for a, a certain, for another program to start that's going to have the 10K tucked in. So we only have 300 spots this round. That's the other thing. Last round, we... We figured we'd have 100 competitors. That was our goal. We got 127. And out of those 127, 28 actually participated. The other 99 just wanted the info and the content. And I'm fine with that. I had people write me all the time. They're like, ah, I feel bad. And I was like, don't feel bad. Just use the content. Like, that's what it's there for. We're pushing it into the space. So we had 27 or 28 actually compete. 17 of those actually submitted videos. And then two of those got to the 100. So that's a really good scenario of if you compete, uh, you got a good chance of winning 10 grand because it's not, if, if people don't hit the hundred visits, then the first two to 50 get 5,000 bucks a piece. And if nobody hits 50, 
the first four to 25 get 2,500 bucks a piece. So we're giving away 10 grand, no matter what, it's just, who's going to win it. And so I'm, I'm excited to see this round. If we get 300 and we already oversubscribed last time, I, I think the 300 are going to go out pretty quick. We're already up to about 50 that have taken it on. Um, and this is going to start January 11th and it's going to go through April 11th. So you're going to have a three month window to get those hundred visits, knock them out. And uh, we're going to have a lot of surprise bonus prizes at the end too. So it'll be fun. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Rob, for coming on. As always, you, you are Very a great well. presenter and great expert. I learned a bunch and everyone, hopefully you did give Rob a big thanks and check out the 10 K at telehealthpt.com. And if you have any questions, comment below and let me know who you want on our next healthcare entrepreneurs webinar. I'll see you guys later.